Okay. So, welcome to another episode of uh, the Rediscovery Channel, where we uh, have a look back uh, to kind of uh, see where we're going. Um, my name is Stilger, and together with Ivor, we're, we're doing a weekly uh, discussion uh, where each week we have uh, a look at a different topic. We don't tell each other uh, what, we, uh, what we're going to talk about to kind of keep the surprise going. Um, and uh, this way, together, uh, we're kind of rediscovering history together because you know what? Um, history is actually very important. Um, there are a lot of lessons to be learned there. So uh, with that said, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's start off this episode. And um, so Ivor, um, for this, this time, I want to talk about a topic, um, um, namely it's uh, piracy. And if I say piracy, uh, what do you think of? I just out of curiosity, anything that comes up in your mind? Unfortunately, and perhaps incorrectly, the first thing that comes into my mind when I hear piracy is uh, some dude downloading uh, songs or shows <laughs> off the internet and, uh, you yeah. know, people complaining about it like, oh, it's really theft, it hurts the creator and all that stuff. But, and yeah. then, you know, over, over, like if you say pirates though, um, mm -hmm. I think of a much greater expanse of time, like, you know, pirates, like the yo-ho-ho -ho, bottle of rum kind of uh, uh, 17th, uh, 18th century and 17th century European pirates. But I, but I also think of like the Phoenician pirates from uh, the times before Christ. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, and that's actually the, the type I want to want to talk about. Um, Oh. Because if you if you're thinking not not the kind about downloading things, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hate that it comes into my mind. That shows yeah, me which is uh, so you know like it's probably if you're gonna do piracy, that's probably the kind where you know at least nobody gets raped or anything like that. Um, <laughs> the corporations uh, say that you're raping them when you take their stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're maybe okay. you're you're raping some people out of their money, their bank account. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, um, yeah, no, um, yeah, pirates. I was more thinking about the yo -ho, ho kind. Except if if you had to make a guess, uh, where do you think piracy was uh, biggest? Like, where do you think it had the the largest impact on trade? Um, you know, just on society in general. During which time period in which part of the world? And I'm actually thinking uh, a very long time period from the 12th century all the way up into the 18th century. 12th century AD. I think if you're talking about uh, after the fall, you know, talking about the Middle Ages, after the fall of the Roman Empire, I would say like the Moroccan pirates, the Barbary pirates were probably the worst. Um, if you're talking about what was the upper limit? Uh, well, I said, you know, up into the 18th century so the 18th century i think english english pirates and uh moroccan pirates were probably the most annoying i know that like um united states shortly after the founding we signed the treaty of tripoli with uh the moroccans because of how they were kidnapping our people and putting them into slavery like raiding our ships and taking slaves that sort of thing yeah Yep, and that's actually exactly what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the Barbary pirates. And um, right. yeah, I mean, you know, Morocco, of course, it wasn't a country um, back then, as far as I know. Um, what was the name of the kingdom or the, the dynasty? Well, um, at some point, it really became part of, I think it was, um, it was a caliphate at one point, but um, later on, it became a de facto uh, under control of the Ottomans, the Ottoman Empire. And they had these rulers put in place here that were basically there, um, you know, doing the bidding of the of the Ottomans. Um, of course, um, uh, that meant that um, they were sent out oftentimes under the Turkish flag 
to capture as many ships um, as they could and uh, basically take them as, as war loot. Um, so it wasn't just ships that they would take, they would also take um, small islands, small coastal villages, hmm. uh, um, even, you know, smaller cities. Uh, they would, you know, that were kind of like away from everything else and they would, um, they would just take everybody there and sell them into slavery. And there was a big uh, slave market in uh, Algiers, Northern Africa, where people would be shipped. Um, Wait, Algiers, um, that's still around today, right? Yes. It's yeah, in Algiers. Uh, Algeria? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And, uh, and and that's actually a place where they would bring together like these this uh, white slavery or Christian slaves uh, together also with uh, the black slaves. Um, so they had different slaves, um, different types of slaves. Um, there are also different rules. So for example, um, if you were a Christian slave under Sharia law or Islamic law, you had certain rights. Uh, that somebody from Africa that was like, you know, um, living oh, in a, a non um, monotheistic religion, uh, they would not have those same rights. So they would actually catch a different price on the slave market because you would be allowed to basically do anything with them. Uh, whereas, you know, uh, officially uh, Christian slaves had certain rights as people of the book. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this this type of slavery is is I think it's a very interesting interesting story. It uh, actually plagued um, a lot of trade. Uh, you know, like so I'm, I'm Dutch, right? So um, if you wanted to go to Indonesia, which was one of our colonies uh, for about three hundred years, uh, you'd have to go sail around, uh, you know, um, South Africa to get there and there would be all these uh, galleys mostly of um, pirate ships that would try to seize uh, Dutch ships but also English, Swedish ships and many others and try to take their, their goods and also the people on board um, for profit. Um, and uh, the estimations on how many slaves were captured this way uh, vary greatly. Um, but it's safe to say that it was at least the 1 million people that were enslaved this way up to numbers as high as 3 million people. Is that um, just talking, I'm sorry, is that talking about just European slaves or are you including like the sub-Saharan African slaves as that's well? That's just European slaves. That's just um, the ones that were captured by these Barbary pirates uh, mm. operating out of uh, Northern Africa. Um, and um, so I actually read a story about a Dutch guy called Cornelis Stout. Um, he uh, and his wife and two kids were on uh, their way to Suriname, which is actually a, a colony in, um, I guess, South it's America. Center, Central America. No, it, uh, it's, right it's South America. Coast. It's near the top. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's right off the coast of Venezuela. Um, or no, it's actually next to Venezuela, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, we may have to look that up, and I apologize for that. It's been a while. Uh, but uh, Suriname was, is, a, is a former Dutch colony that at one point the Dutch traded uh, for New Amsterdam, now New York, which is a different story altogether. But anyway, Cornelis was on his way there because um, he was hoping to uh, to start. Uh, he wasn't doing too well in in the Dutch Republic at the time. Uh, this is the year sixteen seventy eight. Um, but um, you know, bef before you go over the pond, you, you usually go down. Uh, and they were captured by a, a ship under a Turkish flag that would shot a cannon a bullet or ball for, uh, straight through their ship and mm -hmm. captured them all. Um, and actually the, the, the pirate or the commanding officer was a, a renegade, which basically was a, a Christian who converted to Islam. Mm. And that's an interesting part of the story is you had these, um, 
the people that were in northern Africa, they mostly used galleys. So they were people using oars. They they weren't very, you know, they're they're good for like near coastal uh, sailing. Um, but later on, renegades from England, uh, the Netherlands, and other places, they would join them, and they would teach them actually new sailing techniques and really upgraded their their naval capabilities. Um, and at one point, actually, I, I, there, so I, I found this uh, source that between the year 1617 and 1625, they were able to ca capture 206 Dutch ships. So that's, yeah. those are just, uh, just the Dutch ships. Uh, um, and I find this a really interesting story, right? Because this is slavery on a mass scale, but it's something that is not often treated in um, discussed in history. Um, because, uh, you know, it's, it's natural to compare it to the transatlantic slave trade, um, which, you know, was probably much worse. Um, but then again, you know, if you compare a gulag in, in Siberia versus a, a you know, like a, a Nazi concentration camp, um, you know, like one is like 100% evil. The other one maybe is like 80% evil. Both of them are really, really deadly. Um, and, and even then, right, it, it, you, you're, you're grading like things on like a scale of evil. Um, they both deserve attention, I believe, right? Rightfully so. Um, it, it's, a, it's slavery of a different nature. And it's also slavery that's mostly invisible because the, the Christian slaves that were transported to northern africa and then were just you know sold out and distributed throughout the ottoman empire um most of them didn't survive so actually their, their mortality rate was around 17 percent per year uh, so a lot of them died um so so it's you know there's no descendants of these these people around anymore uh, also because their lives were made really, really difficult. So it was really hard for them to, like, <clears throat> even though they could theoretically <laughs> be released after nine years, which is also part of, uh, of, of the Islamic law, you know, many of them didn't make it. Um, and, and if they did, you know, they, they, they wouldn't just be allowed to, to live out their faith, um, or, or at least they would make it very hard for these people. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 an interesting kind of slavery because you know it's it's not mentioned a lot um and and you know probably because the natural response is always like well you know compared to the other kind of slavery the transatlantic kind of slavery it wasn't so bad because you know well this one wasn't based on race <laughs> it was based on religion basically <laughs> But then again, right, does that make it really that much better if you're killing people and enslaving them, not because of their color of their skin, but because of what they believe in, you know, maybe there, there might be something to be said about that, right? Because there was also potentially the, the way out, which was conversion. Yeah, I um, think I would not uh, choose. I mean, that's, it's like one of those situations that, um, you know, like same with being tortured and, and such. You only know how you were, would actually. Blah. You only know how you would actually re, actually react to that situation when you are in that situation. Like you can say, "I would do this or that," but maybe when you're in that situation, you do something different. But I would, um, you know, as somebody who believes in my religion, I would not uh, convert. I would probably choose death. You know, uh, hopefully it would be a quick one rather than a slow one. And on the matter of comparing with the transatlantic slave, I'd rather be a, a slave in America than a slave in any Muslim country because the, I mean, the slavery that was in America was bad and slavery is always bad. Like I would never condone it or want to live it, but really the kind of slavery that existed in America was almost an exact duplicate of European style feudalism. It was very similar to that, even like the layout of the plantations and everything. And um, I mean, it's an interesting topic, right? But yeah, I think it's so easy to start comparing them and and then to say like, oh, well, this one was much worse or this one was much worse. But I think, I think it's it's pretty I think we bad. can at least 
agree that both are really, really bad. And just because one yeah. is worse than the other doesn't mean that the other uh, doesn't deserve to be spoken about. Because uh, this is an important part, you know, like some of these people, like, um, like yeah, what you mentioned, like, and, and if we are going to compare again, right? Like, mm. you know, working in a plantation was horrible, but would be working in a, in a, in a, on a galley, would that be any better? Um, you know, these people were chained in the bot in the bellies of these ships. Uh, they had to eat and, and go, you know, where they were. They were never unchained. That's why they slept. They lived everything in their own filth. <clears throat> and they had to row, like, you know, till basically till they dropped dead. And if they weren't rowing hard enough, they had these renegades that would whip them with, uh, with whips that were dipped in tar. Mm. Um, so, I mean, you know, that, and that was like a common place where um, these, these, you know, stronger slaves would, would end up. And a lot of women were sold like as sex slaves. So, yeah. you know, they were sold basically for the enjoyment uh, of men. They still um, do that today. They there. still do that today, right. So, you know, like uh, Cornelius Stout and actually and his family, they, um, uh, because the captain promised them during the surrender not to sell them individually, um, they they ended up okay. They had to. They ended up with this uh, uh, the brother of the the captain that uh, still you know that kind of took them as slaves, and um, you know. But at one point he has to go away, and his father-in-law, which is like a Greek renegade who converted to Islam, you know, starts pun punishing punching them. Starts beating up his wife. His wife is pregnant. Still has to work really hard. <coughs> In the end, it actually wor it worked out well for them because their their friends and family uh, were able to get, gather. I think it was something like two hundred twenty silver pieces um, back from from in Holland, and they they were able to they were released and able to go back. Um, but many of them didn't, they were not so fortunate, right? They couldn't afford the, the, the bill money. Yeah. Um, and, and they ended up, you know, like um, as a sex slave or, or just being basically being worked to death. And, and I just find it's an interesting story because there were actually several wars where the, the Dutch and the English together, they would go over and they would try to like, you know, fight them and stop them. Um, they would at one point take the Algier as, as uh, the harbor under fire. They bombarded it. The Swedes did as well. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't until they started modernizing their fleets uh, in the 18th century where they were finally able to push them back uh, far enough where they weren't such so much of a nuisance anymore. Of course, then you had Napoleon who took, uh, who took pretty much the whole northern Africa and Egypt. Um, <clears throat> And, and that's also a reason why some people don't like to bring it up because it is sometimes used as a as an excuse, I guess, for colonialism, French colonialism, especially. Um, although there is some truth in that, right? If you are, imagine if Mexico, there's a whole coast, you know, in, in Mexico, I don't know what, Cancun, right? Is, isn't that a coastal uh, place in Mexico? Pardon yeah, I my, think uh, uh, Cancun is a big uh, resort area uh, near the beach. I mean, I've never been there. I've never, me been neither. To Mexico, and I've ne so. never been to Mexico. But imagine that that whole place is like uh, the, the, the place where all these pirates live and that's where they camp out and they, they keep stealing American, uh, you know, they land in New York and they <laughs> and they round up a bunch of people and uh, and then they sell them into slavery. Well, uh, if know, it's New York, they're going after. I don't know that. Okay, you know what? Let me just stop. <laughs> yeah, here. but New York but, would probably be too powerful, right? But let's say they they took all these. Uh, they, they keep taking people prisoners and slave in, into slavery. You know, like how long would it take for the U.S. to respond and and invade Mexico? Right? It wouldn't. Well, be we did invade them for much less in yeah. the uh, Mexican American War. Uh, it, it was, yeah, but then we paid them for the land afterwards. Yeah. That actually the Mexican American war might make a good topic for another time. Yeah. That's actually an interesting story, but, um, but yeah, so I know, I, I mean, this, I, I find this to be interesting, right? Um, 
there was this this incredible scourge where so many people were captured, right? Um, more than a million at least, and sold into slavery. Many people dying. Um, and, you know, it's something that people don't really talk about. And I feel like this is something that, that needs to be discussed. It needs to be taught in schools um, because it, it impacts also like why um you know to some extent why the europeans were in in over there uh and had colonies over there um but it it, uh, it it's also an important discussion about slavery because <clears throat> you know up until 1908 there was there were still slaves being sold in uh in then constantinople right uh, nowadays istanbul Istanbul. Uh, yeah. you know this is this is something you know that we it, it's it's if to be honest the history to do it right we, we should discuss this in, in schools and, and and really talk about it and and actually one uh, interesting part the um the order of the maltese have you ever heard of them uh are you talking about the knights of malta yes yeah um i've i think i heard a little bit um there's a uh, a guy what's his name um Mason Man, Mason Man, he did a video on Malta. He said that they've actually yeah. got like Semitic origins, but uh, they're non they're non Islamic. And that's about I don't know much about it. So they were they were actually uh, founded in the uh, the Holy Land by uh, by Christian knights over there, and uh, basically they were set up um, to defend um, against Muslim attacks. Um, and um they um they started you know fighting these pirates and um and they did there was a, a large knighthood organization it still exists today in the end it was called uh, the knighthood of malta because um they were previously in different um islands like cyprus and rhodes which were all lost to the uh, to the ottomans mm -hmm. uh where they fought like valiantly to the last man and um, in 1565, uh, they played a crucial part in, um, no wait, 1571, in the Battle of Lepanto, uh, they were able to destroy the Ottoman fleet, which otherwise probably would have led to the demise of the, uh, of the uh, European, um, uh, Europe, Europe as a Christian. Uh, nation or nations, I should say. So, anyway, but that was my story for today. And you know, I, I think it's 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 just interesting how we we tend to grade certain things and we talk about certain parts in history. There, there's another topic that maybe I could talk about. Uh, have you ever heard of Holodomor? Yeah, I've heard of the Holodomor. Um, I haven't looked into it much, but uh, yeah, my understanding is it was. Um, an act of aggression. Yeah, so basically, Stalin he he ba he basically killed uh, a couple million Ukrainians um, by basically by um, making sure they didn't have any food and they weren't allowed to leave. Oh uh, uh, yeah, the Ukraine famine. Oh yeah, um, I did uh, I did hear about that. I didn't know it was called. I thought the Holodomor was something else. But I learned about it uh, recently, and um, and I find that interesting. That's part of why I would love to continue bringing these stories, you know, um, up and and encouraging others to to also, you know, look into them and 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 think really about you know what do you hear about history because oftentimes it's used you know or people are using parts of history for their political narrative or they're yep. thinking about parts of history for the same reason and you know and I think that's just that's just silly really um and it's and it's also just dumb because you know the only way to learn from history and not repeat mistakes is to actually learn from history and not you know just block out parts that don't look so good because you don't like them for whatever reason so yeah for, you know, yeah. yeah it is all political that's the problem and yeah. uh, nobody gets like a complete and proper education and there's not really a sense of perspective on things you know, like uh, they talk about here in the United States, they talk about the Atlantic slave trade a lot, but they ignore that 
how many sub-Saharan Africans were harvested by Islam. And it was actually more. And then what happens to those people after they get harvested? Like, why isn't there a huge black population in the Middle East? Well, it's because... Well, I mean, you know, sterilized. It's, it's sterilized, yeah. But yeah, you know, I, I definitely agree, right? You like if you, and I think it's a really good, important discussion to talk about the transatlantic slave trade because it was horrible and it was a huge mistake. Um, yeah, but you got to be, you got to tell the entire story, right? And the, and and also talk about other parts, like how the, you know, the British Empire was basically responsible for abolishing slavery worldwide you know, yeah the- slavery is always bad always and it's not just bad for the people who are slaves but it's also bad for the culture that has slaves and if for no other reason you know like it gets in the way of industrialization because if you yeah. have uh, if you have massive like uh, amounts of free labor then you don't have the incentive to um, as much of an incentive to create labor-saving devices. No, I agree, and that's actually you know part of the reason that some of these empires went went under, like the Roman Empire. That was one of the reasons, right? They relied on slavery too much, and they always had to expand continually. Well, yeah, expand. slavery. The Romans were actually on the verge of uh, an industrial revolution. Like they did have steam power for a while, but. They only used it for special effects, like opening and closing the doors of temples. It didn't occur to them to make a um, a tractor or uh, like a a factory or something like that, like a, a loom or, or anything, because they had menial labor to do those tasks. So when you have to pay your workers, you know, for better or worse, you're going to be sitting there like, how do I save money? How can I have less employees? I want to have less employees and more output. Well, the way you do that is with automation. But if you have slavery, you don't think like that. And that's probably also why the Ottoman Empire, um, you know, eventually uh, was whittled but down by Europeans. Uh, what the Ottoman Empire also brought down was, uh, and that's a different story altogether, is using slaves um, for, as soldiers. Um, uh, Janissaries. And that's, yeah. That was part. That's also how the um, uh, the Persians did it. They also had mostly, you know, like Christian converts. They would convert them, or to, you know, forcefully convert them and use them as soldiers. And and yeah, the Yanitsar, the uh, Janissaries in, in Turkey, mm-hmm. and they kind of as a over, after a while they took over as a class. Um, you know, they, they took all these kids from Albania and uh, Bulgaria and they, you know, when they were like between the ages of six and 12 or something. And then they forcefully converted them to Islam and yep. like they um, they kind of bred them to be the ultimate soldiers and they're completely obedient to the sultan. Uh, but yeah, they definitely played a, a role in the demise of the Ottoman Empire. You know? I think the Mamluk uh, dynasty in Egypt was... Uh a slave uh, thing that got out of control, right? A slave uh, army? Yeah, the, the, the Mamluks, uh, they took Egypt uh, by using those Mamluk soldiers. If I'm not mistaken, they took uh, Alexandria using them. But maybe something, maybe one of our viewers can, uh, <laughs> they can, uh, they can uh, comment on that. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to close it out because we're, we're getting close to uh, 30 minutes. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, if, if there's any, any other questions, remarks, put them in the comments below. Any topics for either myself, uh, Stilgar, or my friend Ivor here, let us know. And, you know, like Ivor said, there's a good chance we'll, we'll pick them up because we're just starting out on this. And I yep. uh, look forward to uh, rediscovering history with you, uh, you guys and gals together. All right. Thanks, man.